chapter 2, verse number 36. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Who was with him? It said that uh, Daniel went to Arioch, and Arioch brought Daniel into uh, the king. There's no mention of Shadrach, Meshach, and Israel. Uh, they could be there. He says, we, that's more than one. <clears throat> you got to read the words in the Bible clearly. It's maybe he's speaking God. He just gave God the credit. Thou, O king, art a, you got to read the words, king of kings, not the king of kings. Big difference. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Romans 13, 1. And that's where they're living right now, as we're reading Daniel. Babylon, a great kingdom, a great power, great strength, and great glory. And whithersoever the children of men, Jews, Gentiles, dwell, the beasts of the field, animal <clears throat> and the falls of the heaven birds has he god given into thy hand so nebuchadnezzar has a kingdom and he's in control of it all including animals so if he wants to eat pigs if he wants to kill the spotted owls god has given him the power that he gave to man adam in the garden he said, I give you all this. This is your dominion. And has made the ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So this image that we see, the head is the gold, the, the leader. Now we have entered the time of the Gentiles. And what we're going to finish reading in Daniel chapter 2 are the Gentile powers, both past, present, and yet future. To begin the time of the Gentiles, and this shows up in the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Nebuchadnezzar begins it at the fall of Jerusalem because of the Jews have sinned. All right, now we're going to take verse 38 and 39 takes a little thing here. And after thee, the head of gold, shall rise another kingdom, Media and Persia, inferior, silver. The breasts and arms of silver are less on the chemical number, are less in value and remember that this image that Nebuchadnezzar see is top heavy so it's less weight inferior to thee this is the second world power the Medes and the Persians they come in and attack Belshazzar and take over the city overnight by going under through the channels of water and there are two rulers, not one. And another. All right, we're down to belly and his thighs of brass. Another third kingdom of brass. That's less than gold. That is less than silver. It's less weighty. Not many people want brass. Gold and silver you bring to the, to the bank. Gold has more value. Brass you bring to the junkyard. I remember as a little boy of my dad, we would go around and collect anybody who threw out an old bathtub. And if you took a sledgehammer to it, you could break it in pieces and bring it to, to the junkyard. It was right down our road, and you would get money called brass. We never had gold to turn in. We never had silver, but we had brass. And this is, again, the belly and the thighs. 
which shall bear rule over all the earth. Now, this brass is interesting because this brass is mentioned again in Daniel. This kingdom is mentioned again. And this is the only kingdom that is not ever given a, a, the proper name. And this is Alexander the Great. Cyrus and Darius are mentioned. Nebuchadnezzar is mentioned. But Alexander the Great is never mentioned by name in the scriptures. He shall bear rule over all the earth. Alexander the Great, look, at, look how much property he got. Compared to this little place called Babylon. It'd do you good to study your history because it's in the Bible. And you got to decipher which proper history without today's Americanism. Because any books, I don't know what the copyright year would be. I would say any books before the 1960s when everyone was smoking dope. The textbooks haven't been changed for race, creed, or sex. You can't find a good book today, copyrighted, uh, of 2000, 1900, or eight, maybe 19 and 2000s, about the properness of, of, of slavery in America. And I know it's wrong. Slavery is wrong, but you're not going to get no truth out of any book copyrighted 1900s and the 2000s. You have to get an old book. You're not going to get proper history today of what happened to the pilgrims. You're going to get a perverted history. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. This is the legs of iron. So we're going down. You can get money in iron, but that's not really much. Women have problems with iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Luke 2 1. This is the Roman government in the time of Jesus Christ. We're living in the legs of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. How do you know? Iron curtain? That sound familiar? Well, that was that was communism. That was social. Yeah, that's also that big church. Shackles of Christians. Paul was put in iron fetters. Leg irons, bars of iron. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, this has not yet happened. Now those two legs, there are two divisions. Aren't there two legs? Normally, isn't somebody born with two legs? Well, watch this. Two divisions of Rome. The west versus the east. Rome was divided into two, the Orthodox and the Reformers. 364 A.D., 1000 A.D., and 1500 A.D. That Roman government split off. There's an or uh, orthodoxy of the Roman Catholic Church, the Greek. There's a Greek and Roman church. Two legs. That's what the whole world is standing on. Whereas I saw his feet and toes. Now we're at the feet and toes. Part of potter's clay. Well, that's what man is. 
That reference far as clear is always shown that man is made of dust, Genesis 2. God, with Jeremiah, took a pot of, of clay and put it on the spindle and formed Israel. We are called vessels of God for honor or dishonor. So here is man and part of iron. So the feet and toes are also a division of a kingdom of clay and iron. The kingdom shall be divided. And he said his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. They're not together. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. The iron is going to have the strength for as much as <coughs> excuse me they for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay muddy clay we go more on these toes and feet we're not at the toes and feet yet It has the toes, plural, of the feet were part of iron and part of clay. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. We're reading in the Bible prophecy of a government that has not yet come. And already we're told that this government is going to be strong. And it's going to be broken. Now we're going to get into something weird. And there's all kinds of ways to explain it. But we're really not told in detail. And whereas thou sawest. Now he's speaking to the king, remember? He said, Nebuchadnezzar, this is the image thou saw. Nebuchadnezzar got the view of this of this image as far as he could see the ten toes. Whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. He went right up to this image. Wow, there's something wrong with those toes. Don't you think the magicians and the, and the other people under Nebuchadnezzar would have had a hard time trying to tell this dream? How many body parts have we talking about that God has defined to Nebuchadnezzar in this dream? A head, two arms, uh, the trunk, which is the, the stomach, two legs. That's 16, and you add 10 toes. That's 26 items in this dream. You think those magicians would ever got it right? Do you picture Nebuchadnezzar sitting on the throne, his jaws is on the floor like I just wanted you to tell me the dream about the image. I didn't think you were going to go into great detail. All I saw was this image, and you're telling me I walked up to it, and I saw its toes. Now, don't you think, God, if he wants you to have the answers in your life by praying that, don't you think God would give you all the details if he wanted it? If he tells us that this image has ten toes, they're part clay and part uh, uh, iron. This gives us such description. If he if he thought it was very important to tell us the birthday of Jesus, don't you think he would have told us that detail in four gospels? We know more about ten toes of this image of a dream than we know about the true birth and the childhood life of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are living in the legs. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but we are living in the legs. These toes and feet are coming next. With miry clay, they shall mingle themselves. They. Themselves. Okay. With the seed of man. All right. Who... Or what are the two items we're discussing here? Iron and clay. Well, which one matches the man? 
the clay. So that iron has got to be, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Do you know somewhere else in the Bible where that happened? In Genesis chapter 6, the angels came down, and they had giants, and men of renown, and the Greek and Roman gods. Now, are these going to be angels? It's going to be somebody. Somebody's going to mix themselves with mankind. And you ever read in the book of Revelation about all the weird things that are going to happen and all the weird animals? There's an animal that looks like a horse that's like a woman that has a tail of a scorpion. You're messing with genetics or something. Somebody's messing with mankind, and that's nothing new. That happened in Genesis chapter 6. Why can't you teach that in the public school system? Why do you got mutant turtles? And you've got uh, cars that can change into robots. And you got all kinds of creatures that look like other creatures that look like other creatures. Because it comes out of Daniel chapter 2. Listen, Satan's getting these children. Just so what happens in 43 may be astonishment to me. But it ain't going to be to the children growing up today or the children of the children tomorrow. That's going to be their Saturday morning or cartoon or their video game. There'll be nothing new under the sun for them. And they, the offspring, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man. You know what the seed of man is, don't you? But they, what is the result of them in the seed, shall not cleave one to another. There's going to be a division. You will not get these two people together because you can't get clay and iron together so when you get these movies the Terminator and that who's battling the humans aren't they iron the robots even as iron is not mixed with clay so all right that even as iron is not mixed with clay that's already telling you what you're reading is symbolic those clay and iron toes are a result of something that's going to happen. And ten toes, ten iron folks, Revelation 17, 3, 13, 1, 17, 11, and Daniel 7, 7. And this ends the human government. This ends the Gentile nation. What does this what does the Gentile nation end? Ends with a Christian in the White House? And in the days of these kings, Revelation, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. What kingdom? From the kingdoms that we read about in verse 37 to 43. The head all the way down to the toes. Do you know that in the leg kingdom we have today, do you know we have Babylonian influence in the legs? You do know that, that the religion of today has Babylonian mixes in it? As Christmas, as Easter or Estar? You do know that Mystery Babylon is alive and well, even though she has fallen down as a kingdom. There's some gold left in the legs. There is some Persian and Median uh, in the legs shown today. Our, alf our alphabet is, is Phoenician. And if you were to do a study in some customs today, you would see that there are Persian, there are Minian roots that are still in the legs. 
and the Roman government, which is split off, is going to show up in the feet. So when we're talking about destruction of all these kingdoms that we just read, it's still there. All these kingdoms, it shall stand forever. After all these nations from the head all the way down to the feet are gone. So Babylon, Romans, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans are all gone. America's in there. She'll be all gone. Darwin is wrong. We all in in failure. I know the result of America. Failure. Ask any other nation in the world right now. Failure. Some nations you can't even ask because they're gone. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, no human cut this rock. And that it break in pieces the iron, the brass. The clay. How did the clay get in the middle of that? That should have been the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold. How did the clay get in the middle? That clay is under the silver, between the brass, and then shows up in the toes. It's been moved in the Bible. Why? I have no idea. But notice, it should really say the clay or the iron, and then the clay or the iron, the brass, the silver, and the gold. And notice how God gives it from standing all the way to its head. That's not how the dream was. Interpreted, Daniel said, the gold is this, and it's you. And then the silver. Then the brass. Then the iron, and then the iron in clay. God's going to take this image and knock it off its feet and slam it upon the ground. So I believe when you go to, let me go, let me go to Genesis chapter 3, I think this is correct, 3.15. 315. It says, when I get there, and I will put enmity between thee, the snake, serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed, Satan, and her seed, Christ, it, Christ, shall bruise thy head, okay, the serpent's head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will return the favor by attacking this thing by its legs. And then work it up to the head. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain. You get that? It is certain. It is Bible prophecy and interpretation thereof sure. When we get to 8, 20, and 21, it will name them. This rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. When it's cut out of the mountain, the mountain is spoken of north as heaven, as Jesus Christ comes down and judges these nations. <coughs> Matthew 25. Prophecy is hit is history written in advance. Second Peter one twenty one. We've already seen the head, the arms, and the tummy go bye bye. We've got yet the legs, 
and the feet. Then we got the Lord Jesus Christ coming. Then the king, then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel. Now in Acts 10, 25 and 26, when, when Cornelius falls down before Peter, he says, get yourself up. I am not the Pope. Revelation 22, 8 and 9, when John falls down before that angel or that man, he says, stand up. In Acts 14, 18, there is no worship of man by anyone. Who's of God? Daniel slipped. Daniel allowed the king to worship him as any Babylonian God honoring of God, small g, man would have done. And commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Here's a sacrifice given for Daniel. A barbecue in the honor of Daniel. The king answered unto Daniel and said, of, true, of a truth, it is that your God is a God of God. A God should be the, but he's a Gentile. He doesn't know any better. And knows how the man came first in the worship, then God. Oh, Daniel, you're so great. Oh, yeah, by the way, your God's a God of God. And a Lord of Kings. And why didn't you say King of Kings? Because guess who he is? He doesn't want to announce that anybody's higher than his throne at this point in time. We'll get a confession out of him later, but he'll get it right. But right now he's saying, hey, hey, you ain't higher than my throne. If you're higher than my throne, then all my subjects are going to listen to you, God, and not me. So I'll give you a little honor. Be careful with people who give God littlest honor and more honor to themselves. They're not truly worshiping God. Because the first commandment of the Big Ten are, you shall worship the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and above all. And a revealer of, a revealer of secrets. Okay. Any Baptist woman in a Baptist church can be a revealer of secrets. But this one was truly hidden. Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges for the fact that God knew what was in his dreams that no one else knew. This is a key on why he gets right later on. He doesn't know God who God is right now, but man, I'll tell you what, God. You sure knew that dream far more than what anybody else would have known that dream. Had you gone any further, you'd probably tell me what the toenails were like. If they had anything to do with the prophecy. King Nebuchadnezzar is knowledge that God is able to do some things that the Babylonian gods cannot do. Insomuch that he takes a man of God like Daniel and says, you know what, I'm going to... Don't you think that in the Babylonian, when he did this, the Babylonian priests and the Babylonian gods would say, how dare you lift up that Daniel? You're supposed to pray to us. You're supposed to burn to us. You just made Daniel like to us. Don't you think somewhere in the books of, of the religion of Babylon that King Nebuchadnezzar made them angry by worshiping Daniel and by honoring this god of Daniel? You mean that Jewish guy who can't have pork? You mean he's got a strange dietary law? You mean that guy who made us eat pulse and water for, what was it, 10 years, was it? Three years, something? When the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Look at that. Daniel's in charge of the, of the magicians. He's in charge of the astrologers. He is put over these men that could not do nothing. 
He has been promoted by the king, by God. And Daniel is going to work in this king's life, and this guy, I believe, somehow, some way, will is saved. Some way, somehow. I believe when the books are open for Nebuchadnezzar in Revelation 20, I think it's going to be somehow to his favor. I could be wrong. Now, many people would stop at 48 and close the chapter, close the book, and go home. Because he made it to the top of the corporate ladder, didn't he? Isn't he the ruler of the nation? Didn't he step on everybody's toes? Didn't he? Eh, look at all the people he stepped on. Look where he is. Look where I am. I'm the hoo-hoo. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Daniel did not forget his praying friends. And I bet you what, what's not told here, I bet you went to the king and said, King, these three men were praying with me. And he wasn't afraid to declare brethren. These are Jewish men, young men. They're not Babylonians. They are hated. You are to give credit to your Christian brethren when they do things for you. You should acknowledge them instead of forget them. And thank the Lord for what they've done. And all they've done was just pray with them. That's all they've done. And Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Now that, doesn't say, that gate is where the, the, the judges sat. Daniel is made a judge, a ruler. You didn't walk into the king's gate and say, hey, how you doing? I, I'm... I'm Joe Soap. You had to go through Daniel before you got to the king. And if he's in charge of these magicians, soothsayers, and whatever the else they were, you know, before these guys could come into the king to see him, they had to come before Daniel. And we read in the Bible the other night that, see if I can find it, in verse 30 of chapter 2, it says, But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation. These guys will come to the gate to see the king because of Daniel and his God. So when these magicians come walking through the gate, the astrologers and the Chaldeans come walking through the gate to get permission from Daniel, They've got to realize that Daniel and Daniel's God, not the, not the Babylonian God, is the reason why they are walking. Daniel and his God are an influence of God. And so much we're going to read later on about Daniel. They wanted to get him in trouble. And there's only one way we can get him in trouble. We'll attack his prayer life. Yeah, Daniel allowed Nebuchadnezzar to worship him. As far as what Daniel is and the character of Daniel, so what? God was with him. God is working with him. And God is using him. And we read in Daniel 2, we read about a government that's passed. That's present and yet to come. And by Daniel chapter 2, when the Jews have had their city destroyed, the temple is gone. Everything that's in that temple is locked up in the Babylonian fortress. We're reading about a captivity of Jewish people. And right in the middle of that captivity, we read about the Lord Jesus Christ conquering all. Jesus Christ will get victory over Obamacare. 
Jesus Christ will get victory over taxes. He'll give you victory over death. He'll give you victory over hell. And at the same time, he will redeem his people into a kingdom that's everlasting, that will never end. There will be no other government but that for the Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. And in the end, he'll wipe away our tears and give us new Jerusalem and give the Jews the new earth. And as far as the Gentiles, you've got the new heavens. And it's called eternity because it will never end. How's that for a promise of Daniel chapter 2? America will fall, but God will rise.